this guys, your boy Blast from Sage D. Am I bad about the last video? You guys already know, got a strike on my channel, can't do videos longer than 15 minutes. So we're here to continue the craziness that is going down in the six true scary police horror stories. The original link, of course, is going to be in the description below. Also in the description below should be a link to part one of this so you can see the crazy fuck shit where this is leading from. If you're just coming to this video first, I suggest going to watch that video first. Links in the description. Uh, let go! The other deputy was just opening the screen door, coming to help me, but he wasn't coming quickly enough for me, so I threw the man out the door, straight at him. They both landed in a heap on the concrete steps. I dove on top of the heap. My backup had been caught off guard, but reacted quickly and had grabbed the man from behind. He wrapped one arm over the man's shoulder and around his neck, with the other arm he tried to grab hold of the man's right arm. I tried to get both his arms so I could handcuff him. I heard the other officer scream and I looked up to see that the man had the officer's hand in his mouth and was biting it. I slammed my fist into his stomach as hard as I could. He released his bite. During all this, the six year old boy was running around, swatting at me and the other officer, yelling for us to leave his daddy alone. Also, the other officer's dog was going crazy in the back of his patrol car. We found out later that he had bitten the seats and ripped the moulding on the doors, trying to get out to help his master. After several more minutes of struggling, we were able to get him handcuffed and under control. We also located the coil to the wife's car under the seat of his truck, just like she said. We put it back on her car for her and made sure she wasn't hurt, then took the husband to jail. We arrested him for assault and battery, and resisting arrest. The assault and battery charge went before the local magistrate, and the resisting arrest went to the General Sessions Court. The magistrate court case came up first. During the trial, I called the wife to the stand, but she told the judge that she had provoked her husband and had deserved to be hit. She told the judge that we had no right to get involved because it was between the two of them. The judge told her that it didn't matter what she thought. If her husband hit her and we saw it, we were right to charge him. The judge found him guilty. It felt good to get the conviction, but it sure left a bad taste in my mouth. We had to fight the man and got scraped and cut on the concrete, and my partner was bitten trying to protect a woman who wouldn't even help us in court. Another hard lesson learned, and the end result, the officers get colder, harder, and less caring. Okay, so for you guys who did not go and look at the first video and are still just sitting here watching this crazy shit go down, so the wife and the husband were, you know, having a domestic dispute. Cops showed up, argument ensued between the wife and the husband, and the wife yells out, You're just mad because you don't want me to tell them that you're fucking your 15 year old daughter. Husband flies off the handle because this is obviously fucking true and fucking hits the bitch and then now we're here. So, <laughs> go watch the first video. <laughs> God, Jesus. Sex isn't that important. God damn it, this shit. Smash your hand for the love of God. There's lotion available. Your own daughter? Come on, baby. Number two. Myself and a buddy on my squad responded to an alarm. The incident location was an old office type building that had been converted to doctor's offices. There was a pharmacy attached to it, and our dispatch received a motion signal from an upstairs office. The keyholder arrives on the scene and we go in to secure the building. The stairs were locked behind a door that, of course, the keyholder didn't have keys to. So we took the elevator up to the second floor. The elevator opens to a pitch black hallway, except for one overhead light at the end of the hall. We start checking doors, and so far all are secured. We get to the last office, and sure enough the door is unlocked. We make entry, and observe it to be an unused office. The door opened to a sizable waiting room and reception area. There were about 10 or 12 exam rooms, all cleared with no hiccups. 
We exit the office and immediately something seems off. That is when I realise the overhead light at our end of the hallway that had been on was off, replaced by another light over by the elevators. I look at my squad mate and he's completely white. I ask him what's wrong and he says, when all these doors we just checked closed and locked? I tell him, yeah, so? My buddy says, well, they're all standing open. Sure enough, all the officers down the hallway we had just checked were now standing open. So we start clearing the officers and securing them. We finish the last one and on our way out, just before we turn the corner to get into the waiting area, the main door just slams shut. Then our radios start going nuts with some kind of static feedback. Now I just want to get the hell out of here. We get back into the elevator and we head down to the first floor to make contact with the key holder again. However, the key holder is nowhere to be found. I contact dispatch and request a call number for the key holder so I can advise him of what we found. Dispatch states that the key holder was still en route to us and was advising an ETA of 5 minutes. I advised dispatch that we had already been out with the key holder. The dispatch requests I give them a call. I call dispatch and she tells me that there is no way we are out with a key holder. She states that the alarm company had only just made contact with one. Eventually, the real key holder arrives on the scene and I ask her about the man that had led us in the building, the first key holder. She asked me to describe him, so I did. She states that that sounds like one of the doctors that used to lease the office on the second floor at the end of the hall. She then states that he had committed suicide at his summer home several days ago. I will never go back there. Number one. I've shared this story a few times before. Searching that house was definitely one of the scariest things I've ever done. I've been a cop for a while now, and this is one of the calls that still haunts me. I got a call for a domestic assault that had just occurred, and I learned that the victim is at the neighbor's house. I get there and find the female victim's throat has been cut from ear to ear. Damn! The neighbor is holding a towel up to her slit throat and the victim is struggling to breathe. The paramedics are on their way and I take over holding the towel for the neighbor. I'm trying to apply enough pressure to reduce the bleeding but not so much pressure that I'm strangling her. It was a delicate balance. A quick law lesson. You know that there are laws against hearsay, right? Basically. I can't testify in court about the events that someone else told me about and I didn't witness. The person who had witnessed it would have to testify to it. One of the exceptions is what's known as the dying declaration. If someone is on their deathbed and believes they are about to die, their statements are exempt from the hearsay rules. Damn. I have some serious doubts that this woman is going to live. I want to ask her who slit her throat. In order for it to qualify as a dying declaration, I need to be able to testify that she believed she was about to die. So I asked her two questions. The first was, who cut your throat? Which she answered. The second was, you realize that you may be about to die? Which she answered, yes. Our eyes were locked and I still remember the emptiness in her eyes. Within a few minutes, the medics showed up, and my partner and I went next door to look for the suspect. The door was ajar, and we could hear a baby screaming upstairs. We went in, guns drawn. We could smell a metallic smell of blood that was really overpowering. We made our way upstairs, past smeared bloody handprints on the walls, and found the child upstairs. He was unharmed, and the suspect was long gone. Thanks to the excellent performance of the medical staff, the victim survived. I met with her a couple of weeks later, and I was very apprehensive to speak with her again. 
I had basically looked at her and told her she was going to die. When she opened the door, I could tell that she didn't recognize me. She had very little memory of what happened after she was assaulted. I told her who I was and she hugged me, crying, and then thanked me for saving her life. The suspect ended up pleading guilty, so I never had to testify as to what I had told the victim that night. But it still haunts me to this very day. God damn, that's fucked! Man, these storytellers are as good as I am. Shit. Man. Like, and it's crazy too, because my imagination is like so vivid that whenever I'm listening to something that's as well told as the stories were in this video, you get the, you see it in your head happening. You know, I've always been like that. I, Everyone's probably like that. It's, you know what I mean? I just have an overactive imagination. But, yeah, man, this shit was so well done, dude. So, yo, um, I've subscribed to this guy just now, man, because these, these, these stories are on fleek. <laughs> this guy, Mr. Nightmare, and uh, there's another guy that's just really good at these. Um, if you guys want to check out the original video, the link will be in the description down below. Remember, they're part one is in the description down below as well because I have a 15 minute thing on my channel. I can't uh, do videos longer than 15 minutes. As always, the boy Blast from Sage D. Make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe as always. Twizzles. <laughs> Make sure to check out my prank channel. I'm uploading two brand new pranks every single week as this one you see on the left. Click the annotation if you want to watch that or look in the description where I'll leave a link for the people who are on phones. And as always, Blast from Sage D. Out.